Today on Upfront, calls for police officers to start wearing body cameras. Will they document cases of excessive force or create privacy concerns for law-abiding citizens? It's my question for Milwaukee Police Chief Ed Flynn. Then, the Senate's top Republican signals the go-ahead for right-to-work legislation. Senate Minority Leader Jennifer Schilling on what Democrats can do to fight it. Covering the issues important to Wisconsin. This is Upfront with Mike Goucher. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Upfront. A growing chorus across the country is calling for increased use of police body cameras after controversial officer involved deaths in Ferguson, Missouri, New York, Cleveland, and Milwaukee. In some Wisconsin cities, police body cams are already in use. A body cam captured the struggle as Janesville officers arrested and ultimately tased a theft suspect at the Janesville Mall. President Obama said last week the federal government will pay to help police departments buy the technology. But are body cameras really the answer in cases of excessive force? We're asking Milwaukee Police Chief Ed Flynn, whose department has completed a test program with body cameras and now wants to purchase 100 cameras for the department. Chief, welcome back to Upfront. Hello. So are body cameras the answer? A lot of people seems to think, uh, seem to think that's the direction we're moving in. Well, there's no single answer uh, for the problems that currently confront us. And uh, sadly, in public life, uh, complicated problems are frequently solved politically with expedient answers that have uh, unanticipated consequences. I think body cameras will be very helpful uh, to policing in terms of evidence and in terms of, you know, documenting when force is used, as rare as that is. But I don't think anybody can pretend that it's going to be a cure-all for, uh, you know, suspicions in the community about police use of force. You say it's not a magic wand. What concerns you about the use of body cameras? Well, in some regards, you know, we have spent, uh, you know, technology has, uh, you know, uh, unfulfilled promises. Uh, we outfitted our cruisers several years ago at great expense with uh, video cameras in the cars. And although they've captured a lot, they have not been able to capture everything, and they haven't been able to resolve every dispute about what occurred any more than uh, NFL instant replays resolve every dispute about what re occurred. The difference is a body camera on a police officer is more like having a camera on an offensive lineman in the middle of a play than it is like having a camera up in the air documenting what occurred. So I just want to communicate that as helpful as they are and as supportive as I am of their you know, use in policing, they're not going to solve every problem. They're not going to answer every question. And in terms of uh, distrust of the police where it occurs, I'm not so sure the body cameras by themselves will uh, regain that trust. Briefly, you've raised the issue of privacy, too. In, in what sense? Well, we intervene in people's lives during their most stressful encounters of their life. It's stressful. They're under pressure. A terrible thing has happened. They have nowhere to go for help except the police, and they call us. And we see them at their most vulnerable moments. And what I ask American society to think of is do they want us to document all of these moments and create files that are subject to open records requests? Because, you know, for every advantage we procure from having body cameras, which is, let's say, good evidence and perhaps the documentation of a use of force, we also raise privacy questions for the average citizen who did not ask to find themselves on a videotape in a police file somewhere. We have uh, a number of incidents around the country, police-involved shootings, including one here in Milwaukee with the death of uh, Dontre Hamilton. Uh, a lot of people uh, uh, in, in certain communities not feeling terribly uh, comfortable with police, maybe as a way of putting it. I want to get your sense of, of what needs to happen now. I hear some people in some departments, some cities, saying we need to rethink policing. We need to have a whole new approach to training. What do you say to that? Well. There are so many agendas at work right now, I almost don't know where to start. You know, I have been in this business a very, very long time. In many ways, this is where I came in. My police career started in the wake of the urban unrest of the late 60s and early 70s. An enormous effort was gone into reforming the policing of that era. And it's fair to say that of all the social agencies America has, none has made the improvements American policing has. You know, we're more selective, more highly trained, more diverse, more restrained in the use of force, and, and have higher levels of integrity at any time in our history. Why the distrust, though? 
I think there's a number of reasons. Number one reason is right now, as before, the police are the most visible representative of government. We're in the community every day. There is nobody else for people to call. We're the social agency of first resort for the poor. But we are not the source of all their anger and frustration. We are most heavily engaged where the violence is greatest, and that is poor communities of color afflicted by high rates of poverty, unemployment, underachieving schools, and every other social imaginable. And you would think, listening to the discussions today, that if you can somehow reform the police, close quote, you can now walk away for those intergenerational problems that are creating the violence that the police are called upon to respond to. My reality, and the reality of most of our coppers is, we're called upon to protect the most at-risk community in America. And in our cities, poor people of color, in this city right now, if you're a young black man, you are 19 times more likely to get shot than if you're a white man, and you're 11 times more likely to get murdered. That's the reality we deal with. But when we step away from our local reality, the national conversation is about how terrible the police are. What I'm saying is, you can't talk about police tactics and completely divorce those tactics from what we're trying to accomplish in neighborhoods that need us the most. I've got just a couple of seconds left. Uh, I mentioned the Dontre Hamilton case. This is a, a homeless man who, after a struggle with a police officer, was shot repeatedly, uh, killed. There are people in this community unhappy about that. There have been protests, even some last week. Um, what concerns you most about this case? You've fired the officer, but so far no charges have been filed, uh, still under consideration. What concerns you most? Well, my biggest issue about this case, aside from the fact that we took strong discipline against an officer that violated policy and put himself in an officer-created jeopardy situation, my biggest issue is nobody's talking about the big picture here. Once again, let's focus on the police. There is a disgraceful amount or disgraceful lack of mental health services nationally for the mentally ill. The deinstitutionalization movement of the 70s was not replaced by community-based mental health. And on any Saturday night, we'd welcome you to come up to County Mental Health where they try their best, count the 10 or 15 police cars sitting there with somebody in mental health crisis in the back seat for whom there is no room. Right now, mental illness is treated on the streets of our city. Night before last, two cops confronted a man who just committed a double homicide, we think, a man who was insane, and they did not shoot him, and they were able to get him to drop that knife. They retreated and got him to drop that knife. That's an important reality of policing, but it points to the devastating lack of mental health services in this nation. That's the big picture issue, and again, it's a lot easier to talk about the cops than it is to fix the hard problems of American society. Milwaukee Police Chief Ed Flynn, we appreciate your time. Thanks very much for being with us. Thank you for the time. Coming up next, are we about to see a repeat of the battle over Act 10? I'll be talking with the new Senate Minority Leader about right-to-work legislation that might be on the way. And later, the state's Transportation Secretary on the somewhat cool reaction to his request for new fees and higher gas taxes. Up Front with Mike Goucher, brought to you by the American Transmission Company and the Wisconsin Corn Growers Association.